Hello, Tiger Cubs, and welcome to another great episode. Now let's start this episode off with AS... Wait, there's no ASB again! Well, if that's the case, I guess we gotta start off with the sports course for the week. With some highlights from the choir assembly after. Cubs, welcome back to the sports episode for this week. Our boys and girls soccer teams each had one game this week, but both teams played against Odyssey. The girls won. Wait, that can't be right. 17 to zero? Wow, that's impressive, girls team. The boys team also played great, winning their game 7-0. That leaves the girls with a 1-1 record and the boys with a 2-0 record. Also, the wiffle ball tournament is starting up with the first games being played on Tuesday, February 7th. Good luck to all 10 teams. That's all we have for this week, Tiger Cubs. We will see you next week. So, without further ado, I'm introducing Impact. So, welcome to the stage. What do you think of the performance? I think it was amazing. Uh, the performance did really well. What was your favorite part? Uh, when uh, the guy who was doing uh, beatboxing, he did the solo performance. That was my favorite part. What do you guys think of the performance? It was, it was really good. good. I liked it. Yes. What was your favorite song they played? Um, the one, from... uh, one by Stevie Wonder. Yes. It was like, the, the delivered. Next up, let's see what happened today in... This Day in History. What's up, Tiger Cubs? Welcome to a brand new episode of This Day in History. Starting off, Elon Musk and his company SpaceX launched the Falcon Heavy rocket. Secondly, Antarctica reaches record high temperature of 65 degrees Fahrenheit due to global warming. Another major history event, the first COVID death occurred in the United States of America. Britain declares war on France during the American Revolution. And then finally, Massachusetts ratified the Constitution. That's all. Now let's see a review of a local food place in town. I can't wait. Hey guys, so today we're going to be trying rice and nori. So I'm here with Jack Wilson, and we're going to be trying the California roll. And you know, probably the specialty. Pretty good, I've had it a couple times. So we're going to get right into it. So here we have it. Um, some seaweed. Not good. Not good. I give you a 9 out of 10. 10. 10, right here. It's so good. Uh, hey Roman, I, I was thinking, what's a good hobby to have? I mean, I have a few, but I know a lot of people who have Rubik's Cubes and I just don't know how to use one. Well then let's roll a segment on it. Let's do it. 
Hey Terry Cubs, I'm Abigail and I'll be showing you how to solve Rubik's Cube. The Rubik's Cube is a popular puzzle that was created in 1974. Today, there are competitions all over the world. To start, we will be showing you a beginner method. This is just one of the many ways you can solve Rubik's Cube. On the screen are some very important algorithms and their symbols. These will help you throughout solving the cube. The different parts of a Rubik's Cube are the middle or center, the edges, and the corner pieces. Now, on to the video. Today, we will show you how to solve the white side. Although you don't have to start with white, it's easy to start with and most people do use it to start. First, find the white center. Then find middle edge pieces with the white side. Make sure the colors correspond with each other. For example, the blue center piece corresponds with the blue and white edge piece. Twist the bottom layer so this edge piece is directly under the spot it should be in. From there, turn that side so the white edge is right next to the center piece. Keep doing this until the white cross is visible as seen in the video. The next step of finishing the white side is solving the white corners. First, you want to locate all the corner pieces of the cube. There are three different places where the white could be facing. In the first example, the white is facing right side up. This corner piece matches with the green and red centers. So we want to complete the white side, we have to move this corner piece to align right under where it needs to be. Then you move it out of here, in this case moving it to the left. Then turn this side down. Finally, move the corner back to where it was originally. This will line up the white corner with the white center piece. Now repeat this with the green and orange corner. When the white corner piece is in the right spot but flip, like this blue and red one, this is how you put the corner. Move the side of the piece down, then move the piece to the right. Finally, move that same face up. Now the piece is ready and placed to complete the algorithm. The last place the white corner could be is facing the bottom, directly opposite the white side. This is the blue and orange side. Turn the bottom to the left, then move this face down. Lastly, move the bottom face to the right twice. This puts the corner in the right position to complete the algorithm once again. That concludes the white side. Make sure to come back next week to find out how to complete the next steps of solving this cube. Next up, we got a segment that's always really cool. Music a foozy. Then let's see a movie review. What's up, Tiger Cubs? Welcome to a brand new episode of Music A through Z. I hope you enjoyed last episode. Today I'm going to be going with a similar format, but I'm also going to be trying to fit as many artists as I possibly can from D to E. With the D artists, instead of starting off with the rock ones, I want to go through some of the hip hop artists. Danger Doom, Danger Mouse, or even just Doom, Daniel Dumoulin is one of the most influential lyrical hip hop artists. In addition, you have Dr. Dre and Drake. For rock, you have Duran Duran, Deftones, Def Leppard, David Bowie, and Daft Punk. For more alternative genres, you have Duster. Finally, moving on to the E artist, you have Eminem and Easy E for hip hop, and Echo and the Bunnymen, Elvis Presley, The Eurythmics, and Elton John for rock and roll. Thanks so much, Tiger Cubs. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hello, and welcome back to Decaying Like a Pushkin. This week, we will be reviewing Hoopa and the Clash of Ages. As always, let's start off with the plot. It is about Hoopa trying to prove his strength until he is unable to control it and ends up needing his energy to be confined in a bottle, which he becomes Hoopa confined. We rate the plot a 9.5 out of 10. Now, on to the characters. The main characters are Ash and Hoopa. Ash is still the same unaging protagonist we all know, and Hoopa was actually kind of interesting. He is mainly in his confined form throughout the movie, using his ring powers to steal and play pranks until his confined energy is released and wreaks havoc. We give the characters an 8 out of 10. Next up is animation. The animation was choppy at times, but it's still really good through the fights with lots of explosions. Though the CGI wasn't the best since it made the Pokemon look like their video game sprites. It wasn't used that much, so it can be forgiven. The animation gets an 8.75 out of 10. Overall, we rate this movie a 9 out of 10. Now we got another fun segment. It's mythology. Then let's get some more insight on some clubs.
Hello, and welcome back to Mythology. This story comes from the book of ancient stories and folklore of Japan, written by an old British dude named Richard Gordon Smith. This story starts with a king named Takeyoki expelling the samurai named Oribi Shima to the Oki Islands for a crime we do not know. Unsurprisingly, this ticked off his daughter Tokyo, who swore that she would get her father back. First, she sold everything she owned and bought a boat, but the plan did not end up working, so she just stole it. When she got to the island, no one could tell her where her father was, so after searching for hours, she went to a shrine where she prayed. Then she went to bed, but in the middle of the night, she was woken by a deafening cry, and when she looked around, she saw a priest about to throw a baby into the sea. But she swooped in and took the baby, and got a very upset with the priest. She looked at the priest and asked him, what are you doing? And she and the priest responded with, we have to sacrifice a girl to keep the sea monster at bay. But Tokyo did not like this very much, so she decided to do something about it. She dived in with a knife, where she found a statue of the man that exhaled her father and decided to take it back up. And when she, but when she started to swim up, the monster came out of the blue and blocked her path. But she pulled a knife out and stabbed his eye and cut his heart, killing the sea monster. With the statue on her back and the sea monster in her hand, she swam back up to the village, and the village praised her. The story of this traveled to the king, Hajo Tokyo, who decided to free her dad from exile because of the statue she brought him. Welcome to the last club overview. Let's take a look at all the clubs SBS offers. First off, Reading Club. This book club meets alternate Wednesdays in the library quiet room during lunch B. This group strives to make a fun space for students to discuss books. Comedy Club. This group creates a place for students to improve their comedy acting skills. This club meets every other Thursday in the library quiet room during lunch B. Next up, Film Club. This fantastic group works in the broadcast journalism room, 107, to learn and improve with cameras, microphones, editing, and so much more. This meets every Tuesday from 2.45 to 3.45. And finally, let's take a look at the Star Wars Club. This group are all Star Wars fanatics. Join in, to, in discussions, activities, and more. They meet every second and fourth Wednesday of the month in room 108 from 2.45 to 3.45. Clubs are always open to all students, any time of the year. Hope to see you there. Speaking of school things, for the 8th graders, remember on Tuesday and Wednesday, the high school counselors are going to come to your science classes. That means make sure you know what classes you want to pick for next year in high school. We also want to remind you that you must that progress reports are coming out, so get your grades in. Okay, now let's roll trivia and random ranks, followed by News and 90. So what amusement park would you rather go to, Disneyland or Universal? Uh, Universal because that was the most recent one I went to and it was the most fun. Uh, Universal. So what amusement park do you like better, Knott's Berry Farm or Six Flags? Probably Knott's Berry Farm for all the uh, rides and stuff that they have. Um, I like Knott's Berry Farm. So what amusement park do you like better, Universal Studios or Knott's Berry Farm? Probably Universal Studios because they're bigger and they have more, more themes and a lot more rides. So what amusement park do you like better, Universal or Knott's Berry Farm? Universal.
Hey there, Tiger Cubs. I've come out of my dark recording cave for the moment to present you with a quick little library reminder. An exciting time, as the library is currently in the process of purchasing new graphic novels and manga for the catalog. However, the library wants to make the best choices for you, so they've opened up a request form for any title you might want to see added to the shelves. You can either find it in the library, by the manga and graphic novel section, or in your Community Connections Google Classroom. Remember, the requests are open until the end of February, so we hope to see you there. Keep reading, Tiger Cubs! Now, for the final segment, let's see photos from the Lunar New Year Spirit Day.